end of October 1943 until the middle of December, San Pietro and the surrounding ground was the scene of some of the bitterest fighting on our Fifth Army front. The Italian campaign had entered its second phase, to push forward again after a static period brought on by heavy seasonal rains. Our battle lines were haphazard as the terrain itself, with its flood-swollen rivers that twisted back and forth across our line of march so that each river seemed like five. And where there was no river to cross, a mountain blocked our going, each peak ahead being a few meters higher than the last we had won, so that each new peak had to be fought for, the hard, uphill way, with the enemy looking down our throats. They had had time to fortify and camouflage their positions. No amount of artillery fire or aerial bombardment could force them to withdraw. That was for the infantry to do employing those weapons that can find and destroy life in narrow trenches, caves, and fighting holes. It was up to the man with the rifle, the man under fire from all weapons, the man whose way all our weapons, land, air, and sea, serve only to prepare. It was up to the foot soldier to attack a hidden enemy over ground that was sown with mines, the anti-personnel S-mines that fly up at a footfall to explode beneath the groin. Nowhere along the entire front were enemy preparations more elaborate than in the San Pietro area. For San Pietro stands at the threshold of Leary Valley, and through Leary Valley, wide and level, runs the most highly prized length of road south of Rome. By early December, we had taken were holding high ground to the northeast, east, and south of San Pietro, the Camino Maggiore hill mass being last to fall. An Italian brigade under Allied command had made a vain attempt to capture Mount Lungo, possession of which would have acted greatly to our benefit in the impending action. The Italians were all but annihilated. In view of their excessive losses, further operations against Mount Lungo's strategic heights were abandoned and it was decided to make a direct frontal assault on enemy positions in and around San Pietro. Elements of the 36th Texas Infantry Division were rotated from position to position overlooking the valley so the troops might study the terrain ahead from various viewpoints. Patrol activity was continuous. Day and night, units went out to reconnoiter the ground, draw fire, take prisoners, thus adding to the sum of our information about the enemy. High points, Mount Lungo's 351 and Mount Sumucro's 1205 and 950 were all manned in force. The town itself was strongly garrisoned with numerous mortar, machine gun, and heavy weapon emplacements. Four enemy battalions were dug into a line of connecting trenches and mutually supporting pillboxes in depth that extended from the base of Mount Lungo, northeast across the valley floor to the base of Mount Sumucro. Another battalion was organized to defend the high ground northwest of San Pietro. Areas before these positions were heavily mined and held a confusion of barbed wire and booby traps. On the afternoon before, D-Day and H-Hour were communicated to battalion commanders. December 8th, at 0620 hours, the 1st Battalion of the 143rd Infantry Regiment to attack the summit of 1205, having moved up the mountain under cover of darkness, and upon achieving its objective to attack along the ridge to a point northwest of San Pietro. The 3rd Ranger Battalion likewise to attack 950, another feature of the Mount Simocro hill mass. The 2nd Battalion of the 143rd to attack over the terraced olive orchards northeast of San Pietro. The 3rd Battalion acting in support to follow the 2nd at 400 yards. Of the original force to establish the beachhead at Salerno, the 143rd had since spent all but a fortnight in action under extremely bitter weather conditions. At Salerno, at the Volturno crossing, 
it had taken mortal punishment. The task ahead promised no less bloodshed, yet it was undertaken in good spirits and high confidence. The first battalion began the long, rugged climb up Mount Samutra. Night fell, our artillery opened up, and throughout the night hours, intense fire was laid down on the enemy's main line of resistance. It had rained most of the night. It was raining at each hour when the second and third battalions crossed the line of departure. Some 200 yards forward, they encountered mines and automatic fire from pillboxes. deadly accurate by reason of excellent enemy observation of the Mount Lunga overlooking our advance, which continued another 200 to 400 yards. attempts to reach pillboxes and throw hand grenades through the narrow gun openings. The third battalion was committed. The attack on Hill 1205, however, was a brilliant success. Leading elements of the 1st Battalion had gained the summit of the objective before a strongly entrenched enemy knew that an assault was in progress. To the right of 1205, the 3rd Ranger Battalion had also captured its objective but only after successive attacks and costly casualties. For on 9-5-0, the enemy was not taken unaware. Counterattacks were to be expected on both 12-05 and 9-5-0. They were not long developing. during the early daylight hours, and even as it was beaten off, another took form. Day and night they followed in unremitting violence. 